First John chapter 2 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. We have been blessed with our first snow this late October. My name is Kelsey. Come along with me today as I do some homemaking, and we jump into scripture talking about how to become detached from this world. Before we start off with our video, I wanted to do a better get ready with me. I know that the lighting in my last one was very poor, so I wanted to show you how I did my makeup in today's video. This is more of a true day in the life video. I am starting with my Tubes & Co skincare. I've been absolutely loving it. I feel like it's made a big difference in the smoothness of my skin as well as my breakouts. I have definitely noticed that since using their charcoal soap bar and this moisturizer that my skin has not broken out. I also feel like the higher quality foundation has made a big difference in that as well. Tubes & Co is actually having Black Friday deals all this month. It was totally not planned, but it just so happened that as I was doing this video, I got an email saying that they have their Black Friday deals going. So if you want to buy from their website from November 9th through 13th, you can buy one, get one 30% off, or from the 21st through the 28th, you can get 20% off their entire site. So if you're not watching this around Thanksgiving time or in November, you can always use code Westman 10 for 10% off, but I would definitely take advantage of these deals. Again, they did not reach out to me. I genuinely loved these products and asked or applied to be an affiliate. I will have their link down below if you are interested. I am using Ulta Highlighter, the Fenty Contour Stick. These are eyeshadows I actually made when I sold makeup as my business. I would create formulas and all sorts of beautiful colors and sell them. And I absolutely loved it, but I felt like this really wasn't God's calling for me. So I do still have lots of my eyeshadows left. So that is what I am using. I will also link any of the other products I didn't mention below as well. Before we dive deep into scripture, I just wanted to kind of take a note on the makeup and the dress wearing. I do get asked about it a lot. And my response is that if you are someone who loves to embrace your natural beauty, absolutely do it. There are many, many, many days that I do not wear makeup. I don't feel like I have to make, wear makeup, but sometimes it is fun to be glammed up and just feel put together. I truly believe that how you dress and how you look changes how you act throughout the day. And I am so much more productive if I feel put together. And for me, this could be as minimal as just throwing a dress on. I would get dressed and want to look nice for any other job. So I want to do that for my family as well. The section of my house that I am in right now and am decorating is an addition that they put on a few years ago. They had one of their mothers living with them and then they ended up turning it into an Airbnb when she moved out. And so it's just kind of this extra space that isn't necessarily utilized all of the time, but it works perfect as a guest house when we have family or friends that come over. And we have just tried to open up the doors since things were pretty closed off to the rest of the house. That way it was inviting and just another living area that my kids can play in and that we can just enjoy this fireplace. Everything that I am decorating with, I either bought from Facebook Marketplace or I already had. I'm really working on being content in using the things that I own and not getting drawn into social media and the pressure to have everything look perfect and Pinterest worthy. I really want to focus on the commandment, thou shalt not covet their neighbor's goods. And that is what I don't want to be jealous. I don't want to have this desire to have what other people have. I want to be happy with the blessings that God has given me. In this little video series, this is video one of four, and we are going to be discussing the Beatitudes from the Bible. And if you don't know what the Beatitudes are, they are sayings from Jesus, and in particular, they are eight blessings that he gives us and tells his disciples and those listening 
during his Sermon on the Mount. And we are going to be looking at that from both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. I encourage you now to get out your Bible and read them alongside of me. If not, the rest of this video is a good time for you to get up, get moving, do some homemaking, and listen as we really dive into the precious words of Jesus. In this video specifically, we are going to be covering the first beatitude, the first blessing. And we're really going to be focusing on the theme of detachment from this world, living our Christian lives out of this world, without the world's approval, without this world's ways, being detached from all that this world has to offer. Matthew chapter 5 says, When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We know that scripture is spirit-inspired, that all of the authors of the books of the Bible were inspired by the Spirit. This, these are God's words to us. So he is very particular in what he is saying. And you will notice that in Matthew, it said, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. And in Luke, it just says, blessed are those who are poor. This is very intentional. God is reaching two different people, multiple people, of course, but two different types of people, those who are poor in spirit and those who are poor. This isn't by accident. This isn't a coincidence. He is speaking to both and they are both powerful words. What God is saying is blessed are those who aren't attached to materials, who are not attached to things of this world, to false treasures, false idols, to materialism. Blessed are you who are poor for God knows that we don't need anything besides him, that he is enough, that he will fulfill us. So he says, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. There are multiple verses of scripture that talk about how our reward is the one in heaven, that the rich or the wealthy, the king, that their reward was here on earth, that they have already gotten their fill, but for those who are poor, their reward is waiting for them in heaven. In the Word on Fire Bible, Bishop Barron adds commentary for Jesus' greatest sermon, and he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. We might say, how lucky you are if you are not addicted to material things. Here, Jesus is telling us how to realize our deepest desire, which is the desire for God, not for passing things that only bring temporary comfort. He continues by saying, one of the classic substitutes for God is material wealth, the accumulation of things. Like any drug, houses, cars, and property provide a rush when they first enter the system. But then in time, the thrill that they provide wears off and more of the drug must be acquired. This rhythm continues until the addict is broken by it. And we have to think about how necessary it is for us to find that detachment to become detached from what we are addicted to, whether that be fame or money or power, status, and our education, our careers, we must find detachment from it. We must really think about these first words that Jesus is telling us, blessed are those who are poor or poor in spirit, those who are not addicted to these materials, those who are not addicted to any of these earthly desires that are lies that provide us with emptiness and in the end provide us with nothing. One of the things we often say in here is, oh, if I just would win the lottery or if I won the lottery, I would do this. And just think about how it would change us as a person. How if we truly won the lottery, if we were given all of this money, what would we do with it? Because the chances are we would turn to this world. We would fall into deeper sin. We would be greedy. We would be selfish. We would buy for us. We would care for ourselves. Maybe we would give some to the poor, but our hearts wouldn't be in the same place. They wouldn't be grateful. They wouldn't be thankful. And they most likely wouldn't be turned to the Lord, given over to the Lord. That is why he's saying, blessed are you who are poor, who are poor in spirit. 
because those are the people who call upon him. Those are the people who depend on him. We can be those people too. God is calling us to be that person, that person who asks everything of him, who knows that they can't go on. They don't have the strength. They don't have the energy without him. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I am trying a new bread recipe today. I have decided to make braided bread. This is from the Magnolia cookbook. I will leave the recipe linked down below. I ended up making this the following day and tweaked the recipe just a touch and I ended up liking it better. They both turned out very beautifully, but I did like the slightly tweaked version of the recipe better. So I will have them down below. What I did was just mix some hot water with yeast, add some sugar to it, add in two eggs, oil, and then three and a half cups flour. Mix it all together. I'm going to let it rise for about an hour. This dough specifically doesn't really double in size. I don't know what it is, but both of the times that I've made it, it didn't really rise super high, which is fine. But once I did the second rise, it rose beautifully. So now I am just shaping the dough. I used a little bit too much flour on the countertop. So I just brushed it into the bowl, got some excess sticky dough off, added that to the dough, created a nice, beautiful round shaped dough circle, whatever you call it, placing it in the oven to warm. I like to put my oven on like 100 degrees if you can, let it warm up and then turn it off and let the dough rise. And now I'm going to cut the dough into three sections, kind of like you would if you were a kid with Play-Doh and you were making snakes, <laughs> just rolling it into kind of a flatter snake shape. I don't know. You'll you'll see one when I do it. And then I just braid it. I baked this at 375 degrees for 25 minutes. It is absolutely delicious and beautiful. It is a great all around bread. So if you want sandwich bread, if you want bread to dip in soups, and the shape really allows it to be very multi-purpose. I have found with making bread that the cast iron sheet pan works the best. Cast iron can get very hot, but it takes longer to heat up in the oven. So I can place this in the oven and my aluminum pans in the oven or whatever other pans <laughs> and the bottom will start to really burn and brown where the cast iron, since it takes longer to heat up, I don't have that issue and it stays a nice golden color. So if you are having problems with rolls or homemade bread kind of burning on the bottom, definitely try getting a cast iron skillet. I'm also all about cast iron. If you didn't know, I love cast iron. That is what I use. I will make a video talking about cast iron and how to care for your cast iron. I promise. But I will have the sheet pan linked down below. I do highly recommend it. Once I let this rise again for about another hour, I do pop this back in the oven. I place it on warm. It starts to heat up. Then I turn it off. And then I just add an egg wash to it and sprinkle it with some coarse salt. As I am putting on the egg wash, I'm actually talking to my grandma. I talked to her for over an hour the other day. I love to talk to both of my grandmas. I love them so dearly. I was able to talk to them both. I haven't gotten to talk to them for a while. So if you see me on the phone in some of these clips, you know that I am talking to my grandma just having the best time. Jumping back to scripture, there are multiple scriptures that I want to talk about. But before we get started, I really want you to think about some things in your own personal life that you feel like you are attached to. And I watched a video on Instagram, naturally, of Denzel Washington saying, you know, I don't think people could go even a week without their phone. And I just was like, oh yeah. I, people definitely couldn't and then I really internally thought about it and was like oh could I even do it so one thing that I feel like we need to focus on as a society in a world is steering away from technology and our phones and really being present with our family with our friends with what's going on 
Instead of using our time wisely to learn a skill we are wasting by scrolling and comparing ourselves to what we see online and on social media. So really think about in your own personal life, what is something that you need to detach from? Luke chapter 14 verse 26 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. When I first heard the scripture, I thought that this was very harsh. I just didn't see how you were supposed to hate your children and your family. But but that's not what God is saying. He's saying, do not love anyone above me. Love me the most. Seek me first. And it's such a powerful reminder when he uses the word hate. He's saying that we need to detach ourselves from our parents, from ourselves, from our children, and focus on him and attach ourselves to him, find ourself in him. And I thought that that was such a powerful and beautiful verse to start off with because part of our detachment from this world is detaching from those that we love, which honestly I think is the hardest part. If you ask someone what they're afraid of, a lot of people will say, leaving my family, dying and leaving my family behind or losing someone that they love. And that is because we are attached to them so dearly and love them so much. And God is telling us right now, love me that much, love me more than that. So that is something that I definitely need to work on. And I wanted to add to this video because it was very convicting. We need to make him our number one and love him first. You might have noticed this picture frame being moved for the third time. Yes, it was in my mudroom, then my kitchen, and now it's here. Again, I will say I am rearranging furniture pieces that I already had. And then at a Christian thrift store, I bought two bowl and pitchers for five and ten dollars so i am adding those but these are all things that i had and i am just rearranging my house to bring a new look and a new sense of beauty to a different area of my home john chapter 15 verses 18 and 19 say if the world hates you know it has hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love its own But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. This is a beautiful reminder to anyone who is a people pleaser, like myself. We can't expect to get the approval of everyone. We can't expect to be liked and approved of and accepted because Jesus wasn't. And when you become a follower of Jesus, then they are going to hate you too because he is not of this world. We are not of this world. We are of heaven. Therefore, if we are hated, know that they hated him first. Philippians chapter 3 verses 18 through 20 say, For many, of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly. And they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that we can change our minds so that they are not set on earthly things, but on things that are above, things that are greater, better, and eternal. This is a very convicting scripture passage for me, and I just pray, and I hope that you pray for me as well, that I can put this into action, that I can not just say that I will set my mind on things above, but I actually do it. I actually think it and that my heart is transformed. For supper, I am going to be making some chicken gravy over mashed potatoes. I have some shredded chicken that is left over. I just placed a bunch of chicken breast in a crock pot yesterday and then I kind of spread out that shredded chicken throughout multiple meals. My daughter is helping me cut up potatoes. We're going to be making mashed potatoes and then for the gravy, 
I'll be sauteing or warming up the chicken in some butter, adding some seasoning, and then adding some chicken broth with cornstarch, and then just your typical seasoning of onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and then serving that with our fresh homemade bread. James chapter 4 verse 4 says, Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. This is such a powerful verse, and I just pray that we would really meditate on it. Whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This means that we have to take action. We have to see the things of the world, the sin that is all around that is just becoming the norm. We're seeing it online. We're seeing it in person everywhere. Things that are not okay, that are just becoming acceptable in our world. And we have to say, no, we cannot conform to it. We cannot be part of it and accept it and say, well, I can't change it. So I guess it's fine. No, we cannot be conformed to this world and we have to be transformed in our minds. We have to be able to discern and pray about it and say, is this God's will? Is this what God wants? And let the Holy Spirit in and listen to his voice because I know that he can speak to all of us. We just have to listen. Let us not be conformed to this world. All of the laws, all of the rules, all of the social norms, let us not be conformed to it. The last scripture I wanted to share was from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. It is so hard for us to not fall into all of the temptations that this world has to offer. All of the beautiful things and the false pleasures that that bring us joy for just a moment. All of the things that just bring us temporary happiness. But we must be able to resist it. And this is just such a beautiful verse that talks about how we are not receiving the spirit of the world, but the spirit from God. He has given us the Holy Spirit for discernment, the Holy Spirit to speak and teach us wisdom. How powerful is that? How powerful is it for us to be able to say no to this world, to say no to all of the empty promises? Because the spirit lives in us. He dwells in us. He's guiding us. And it's such a beautiful scripture to speak on us, to say that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us, that the spirit helps us to see those, to recognize them. I hope and pray that after this video, you take a moment to really speak with the spirit to find the things in your home, in your life, all of those gifts that God has bestowed upon you, that the Spirit can help you to discern those and to really elevate all of the beautiful things that God has given us on this earth and in our life, even when things don't go well, even when we are struggling or we are poor, poor in spirit and poverty poor. Let us dwell on this last Bible scripture, these last couple of verses, and really see the gifts that God has given us, and really pray that we can become detached from this world. I am just finishing up this meal by making some garlic butter, which just consists of some melted butter, fresh garlic, and garlic salt and then some cinnamon and sugar butter. This is such a tasty meal. Thank you so much for coming along with me as we talked about detachment from this world. I hope you will join me for the following videos as we continue to cover the Beatitudes. I also have created printables of all of the Bible verses with beautiful backgrounds that I covered today. Let us pray for each other as we continue to work on becoming detached from this world.